Well, I knew Cavalcanti uh, from the days when he was working at Ealing, because uh, that was when he started making, at least I think if this was the first phase of his career, that he was making fictional feature films and working for Michael Balcom. And uh, he seems there to have been a pretty well an all-purpose person. He produced some films that he didn't direct. He um, directed a number of films, of, of which uh, Went the Day Well was one, and untypical in that it was um, they are done for, I think, the War Office, certainly for some government department, as a, a pro propaganda film, because it's uh, basically uh, uh, surprising that this was so, because it's not the cheeriest vision of what might happen in a, uh, an invasion like that. Good day to you. Come to have a look at Bramley End, have you? Pretty little place. And a nice old church, too. 13th century parts of it. Still, it won't be that that's brought you, I don't suppose. It'll be these names on this grave here. And the story that's buried along with them. Look funny, don't they? German names in an English churchyard. They wanted England, these Jerrys did. And this is the only bit they got. The Battle of Bramley End. That's what the papers call it. Nothing was said about it till after the war was over. And old Hitler got what was coming to him. Whitson Weekend it was, 1942. As peaceful and quiet here then as it is now. Even though there was a war but uh, most of his films, he made a couple of period films, things that are, are very good, like, uh, I mean, his, uh, probably his best known period film was Nicholas Nickleby, which is one of the best Dickens films of that period, alongside Great Expectations and Oliver Twist, the David Bean films. And uh, so on, but I'm not quite sure how he came to be doing it, uh, went the day well. But uh, I was always intrigued by it, um, partly because it had this credit to Graham Greene for the story, if not the script, uh, as often with films that were commissioned somehow by the government. Uh, they credits are a bit skimpy and uh, indirect, I suppose. So, um, uh, but I was interested because I was also interested in, in Graham Greene. I mean, eventually I got to know Greene himself uh, through uh, editing his film criticism because in the, in the 30s he was uh, quite a a famous, I don't know how influential, but quite a famous film critic, because he was writing throughout the relatively brief life of a magazine called Night and Day. And uh, so fi finally I, I suggested to the BFI that an edition of these would be very interesting. And I, uh, I got to know uh, Green that way because the next time I was at a Cannes Film Festival, he was then living in uh, saint jean les pins and I, uh, so I met him and had dinner with him, during which he talked mainly about his affair with Anita Bjork, who was then famous for um, having been in the uh, Sherberg, I should say. A uh, film of Miss Julie, which was an international sensation, and so 
Because she did that briefly go to Hollywood and was going to be starring in Hitchcock's I Confess, except that uh, in Hitchcock's words she arrived with, with an illegitimate baby in a shoebox and this immediately interrogated the, the studio, so she, uh, she didn't want it to be in I Confess or indeed any other Hollywood film, I think. But uh, apparently around that time Green had a quite long-lasting affair with her, and for some reason he was telling me all about that. But I, and, uh, I, I did persuade him to let me um, edit his of film criticism, because he said that if it hadn't been me, a film critic of the Times, and the BFI as co-publishers, uh, he wouldn't have done it because it would save her too much of scraping the bottom of the barrel. But uh, he agreed that I could. And uh, of course I asked him about went the day well. And he said, oh well, he didn't really have anything much to do with it. But it was based on a short story he'd written about a Nazi invasion of um, of Britain and so on. But he said very loosely, I mean, they just... I think they just took the idea from the story and so he didn't have anything else to do with it. Interesting, I thought. Uh, but uh, he he seemed to be... Uh, well, he was a bit, a bit undecided about what he, what he wanted to be known of his work. So uh, the th things that he didn't think stood up to his contemporary standards, he didn't quite want to admit to, so I don't know what the real story was. Anyway, to come back to uh, Went the Day Well, it was based, uh, as it seems, on this fragment of a story about uh, the invasion of the um, of Britain by the, uh, by the Nazis and how it's dealt with. But uh, Carol Canty I got on very well with because he was a uh, very likely Brazilian originally and uh, later on went back to Brazil and made a number of features there but he was really an international figure he made films in Germany in France in, in Britain obviously and, uh, and in Brazil and South America in general uh, so he difficult to tie down and uh, after I got to know him first, I used to see him usually. I would have lunch with him whenever he was in London. And he uh, he, he always came with uh, Pierre Prévert, Jacques Prévert's brother, the director brother. And uh, I, I, I think they were, as they say, just good friends. I say that because Calf was... Uh, was certainly gay and openly gay, uh, but I don't think Pierre was, anyhow. And uh, so I was fascinated by all uh, that he had to tell me about his his working life and so on. And he apparently the uh, went the day well was a film not without its difficulties because. Uh, he, at least he was able to make it without interference, I think not even from Michael Balkan, who tended to be rather an interfering studio head who would influence uh, what was done at Ealing. Indeed, most of the um, famous Ealing films were done almost in committee. But uh, anyway, to come back to Cav, uh, that uh, apparently he often found Balkan quite uh, a difficult taskmaster, but uh, for some reason on this film he didn't interfere very much. Apparently um, uh, Nicholas Nickleby was really damaged by having about half an hour cut out of it by Balkan because he thought it was just too long, and so on. And alas, an unedited version doesn't seem to exist. So 
appear on a, on a revised DVD. But uh, I think uh, well, the great thing about Cat was that uh, unlike a lot of the um, Ealing directors who had uh, started in, in documentary and were very at home with documentary, uh, Cav was uh, was one who hadn't. I mean, he had made documentaries, among other things, but that wasn't his background, and all his other films are very theatrical in a way. I mean, something like uh, um, Nicholas Nickleby itself, or the episode in Dead of Night, which is the one with... Um, Michael Redgrave and the um, and the dummy, the ventriloquist dummy, and so on, uh, the, which are, uh, are really not at all like uh, a sort of documentary Ealing. And I think that uh, the advantage of uh, Went the Day Well is that uh, it's not made from a sort of documentary point of view. It's It's made as a as a full-blown fiction film and works very well in that way. Probably works better than um, it would if it was uh, one of those semi-documentaries. Uh, I, I, Kevin Kennedy had a, finally a very peculiar career, but I think fascinating. It is, uh, I, to me it's uh, sad, or unfortunate anyway, that he is forgotten now. I mean, hardly anybody would react to the uh, to the uh, the name even. So, um, well, a lot of his contribution for the GPO is not credited. Well, that is true too. Yes, I mean he. Well, that's the problem with working for sort of official sponsors. That, as I said, the credits are often skimpy, to put it mildly. Mm -hmm and don't tell you who actually did the work. But yes, yeah. E even at Ealing he was uh, a producer quite often, and that's basically what he was doing with the GPO film unit, mm -hmm. producing all those actually now wonderful films. And, again, come to think of it, I think the advantage is that, yeah, they're documentaries, but they're not made like documentaries. They're made like art films, mm. if I dare use the dirty word. So, um, what was the what were the circumstances when you met him for the first time? Was it a formal occasion or was it informal? I think I met him first at uh, some BFI do some party for something or other, and. Uh, what year was this? This would be, well, let me see. I think probably around 62, 63. Because, I mean, I think all of my meetings with him took place during the 60s, when I was still film critic of the time, mm -hmm. i.e. before I went off to L.A. Yes. Yeah. And he left to favourable impression upon me. Oh, he was, uh, he was terribly nice and interesting and witty and uh, amusing and full of interesting stories, most of which I've probably forgotten now. And uh, oh, he's just a nice guy. In my, in my case, I think he liked me, I certainly liked him. <laughs> 